All right, in this video, we are going to be making a folding corner display stand. And I actually have two of these to build for a customer. Uh, these are a pretty popular item, uh, pretty simple to make, pretty inexpensive, but we can get a, a, a pretty good turnaround on our investment here. Um, so I've done some of the preliminary legwork. So we're gonna be using fence pickets for this project. And as a side note, if you have an idea of a project you wanna see made out of fence pickets, uh, drop us a comment or, or look us up on Facebook. It's KC Millworks and Metal on Facebook. Um, and uh, just drop us a message of what you'd like to see uh, us put together for you uh, as far as a project out of fence pickets. We've got a lot of projects coming down the line uh, for fence pickets, but uh, if you've got something you want to see, uh, definitely let us know. So, at any rate, uh, this uh, we're going to kind of talk about the materials as we go. Um, I have built a lot of these, but I don't have... Uh, uh, I'm not working off a printed set of plans. If you want a printed set of plans, we do offer them. They're $5. Uh, and the information on how to obtain those plans uh, are in the um, listing description below. Okay, so uh, to start off with, our sides of our corner shell are gonna be made out of six fence pickets. Now our fence pickets are five eighths of an inch thick is what I'm using, and they're five and a half inches wide. Um, of course, you could adjust those dimensions of whatever fence pickets you're using. And uh, so we're using one full length fence picket, which is uh, six foot, 72 inches, and then we're going to drop down to our middle fence picket here is 69 and then finally 66 okay so again so we're going to need two 72s two 69s two 66s if you're going to follow exactly and then what we've done here from the bottom let's see if i can remember all these dimensions i'm pretty good i've got a lot of dimensions in my brain now so uh so refer to the plans uh if i happen to make a mistake but from the bottom edge, we're gonna do three inches, and then we're gonna do uh, 17 and a half inches, and then we're gonna be doing 32 and 5 eighths, and all of this is from the bottom. So I just set my ruler down three, 17 and 7 eighths. I'm sorry, I, th I think I said 17 and a half earlier. That's really 17 and 7 eighths. This is uh, 32 and 5 eighths. This is 47 and a half. And then lastly, this is 62 and 3 eighths. Okay. So we'll do that one more time quick. 3, 17 and 7 eighths, 32 and 5 eighths, 47 and a half, and 62 and 3 eighths. And what that will do is that will give us a finished uh, shelf where all the shelves have an equal spacing. And that spacing is approximately 14 inches. Okay. Now, there are some other things that we could definitely do here as far as um, making the shelves adjustable and things, but in this case, uh, we're doing all fixed shelves, okay? Now, one of the challenges that uh, uh, we've got to overcome with our corner displays here is they have to be foldable, so we need to be able to fold them up and throw them in the car and uh, go on to the next show. So that's one issue that we've got to contend with. They got to fold, that's not a big issue. Um, in fact, we've got these, uh, we're gonna be using three hinges per side here. So we've got these uh, strap hinges that we use. We use these on a lot of our different projects. I went with two inch this time. Th these aren't super heavy, and these are about a dollar less than the typical three inches that I would normally use. So we're gonna give those a whirl because these, like I said, these, these are not uh, heavy at all uh, when they're put together, okay? So, uh, but the other challenge that we have is uh, we need it to be foldable, but uh, we also need it to be sturdy when it's put together. We don't want it to come apart uh, and we don't want it to fold into itself. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making our shelves in a, in a special way where it will not allow this to come apart or fold into itself um, because of the way our shelves are made. And we're gonna be doing that with French, French cleats. 
So if you're not familiar with a French cleat, uh, I'll explain here. What we've done here is, remember our, our, our source board here is five and a half. And so we can get three of these, um, which are inch and three quarter out of one five and a half inch board. So uh, what I would recommend we do is go to your table saw, rip inch and, inch and uh, three quarter wide, get you three strips, and then back to the table saw, you can see, in fact, I still have my table saw at 45 degrees and add a 45 degree bevel along those strips. And then we're gonna cut those strips down to 16 and three quarters. That's the magic dimension. So when we put these strips on, we're gonna make sure that the bevel is, let me just set it down here so we can understand this a little bit better like that okay now our shell is going to have the opposite bevel it'll kind of sit in there and lock into place that'll make more sense when we get to that point so uh so all these dimensions that we made previously uh you can see how that's going to line up now what i did on mine is again these are 16 and three quarter and what i did is i used my craig multi -a tool mark tool here and I came in one inch and I drew a one inch line. You see that? So you see that line there? So what we would do when we go to glue and stable these in place is go ahead and move this. So we're gonna be flush back here and then we're gonna be move that out to that one inch line. So the end of this lines up with that. And, and you can do that or you can not do that. But well, what that's gonna leave us is it's gonna leave us a gap, okay? Now it won't be quite that dramatic but there'll be a gap between each one of these boards, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and then I'm going to staple all this together initially and then we'll come back in. I have some one inch screws somewhere uh, that will come back in now these one inch screws, my assistant just delivered my screws. These are the screws we use. These are one inch deck screws. I only find these at Lowe's. Home Depot does not carry them. That's typically where I get my stuff is at Home Depot. But those are one inch screws. I think they have a T15 head on them. And uh, we'll come back in and we'll put some screws in here. We'll put two screws. We'll staple everything together initially and then we'll come back in and reinforce the screws there. Okay. So let me kind of get this one put together, then we'll take a look at this panel. Now we have to make two of these, but the next one has to be the opposite of this one. Okay. So if that, uh, and that'll make more sense when we, when we get to that point. So let me go ahead and get this put together and then we'll take a look and see where we're at from there. Let me just show you where we're at here. So you can see here we're flush on the back and then you can see on that line is all the way there. And then out here, is right there. So you can see how much gap, you know, I just eyeballed the, the spacing between. And then I came up here, same thing, flush on the back. There's my line, so that edge goes right in line. Come out here, we're right there at that one. And again, we're gonna space that in between. And then we're just gonna go ahead and come in and add our next pieces. One thing to keep in mind is when we're adding our glue, we want to be back from that line a little, just a little bit, because we don't want glue in this little channel. Um, so just make sure that the glue is back just a little bit. And we don't need a lot of glue. And you can see what I've done here. I've just got some one inch staples, and then I'll just come back right over top of those staples and add my screws uh, for a little extra support. So there we go. We got three more to put in here. And then we'll got to flip this and make the opposite version of this. So there we are. All of our pieces are in place and just be mindful of those angles. Okay. It's really important for those to be that way to accept our shelves when we get to that point. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, put screws in the same place of all those staples before I move on to my other panel. 
So there are our two panels. And you can see they're kind of mirrored one another. And then we've got our two inch strap hinges, one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle. And we're gonna use not the screws that came with it. We're gonna use the same one inch deck screws that we used to screw these together. But I ran out of those. So I have to run to Lowe's, get me some more of those. And then we'll put those strap hinges together and then we'll, we'll uh, take a measurement for the shelves that we're gonna be building. So I'll go do that and then we'll come back and take a look at our shelves. Well, I think that's gonna work marvelously. So you can see there, that is kind of our finished sides to our corner shelf. And all I've done here is just laid my square in there to make sure those are square. And then I want to measure from that line right there to that line right there. And uh, that's what I want my shelves to be. So the computer says that should be 26, but we wanna get an actual dimension and uh, whatever that is, is what we'll cut our shelves. So I will get that measured and kind of move on to our next step here. Now I just wanted to kind of share something with you. So the bottom board here is 26 and you can see from point to point it's 26. Now I went ahead and cut one at 30 just to show you that you don't necessarily have to use 26. I am going to be using 26 for mine but you wouldn't have to. This is cut at 30, you could cut it at 28, and this will just come out on, on the side over here just a little bit, which ultimately will give you a bit more depth this way, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and measure the distance from there to there on our 26 inch piece, right? And then we'll go ahead and cut our next board in. Now there will be a little triangle in the very back corner that will not be filled in, but you're not gonna be using that little corner anyhow. Okay, so on my 26 inch board, I'll measure from there to there and cut another board 45 degrees. And then I'll have to do five of those. Five one size, five the other size to make up all my shelves for my display stand. Okay, now with the shelves just sitting in place, this, this, there's nothing keeping that from going out and there's nothing keeping that from coming in, okay? So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make a special cleat that will hold our shelf in place and keep these from going out and keep these from coming in. So that, let me get my shelves cut and then we'll talk about the special cleat we have to make for each one. So now you get a little bit better idea of how we cut that. So we've got our 26 inch board here. We've got our smaller piece that we just marked how long this line was to know how big to make that. Of course, we've got 45 degree angles on those cuts. And so now what we have to do is make a specialized cleat that will lock in here. So again, these won't go out or be able to come in and our shelves will just kind of sit on top and lock in to those cleats okay so that's kind of our our next step so let me get a cleat made and then we'll explain how to make it you know i want to show it to you first so you have an understanding of what it looks like done and now mind you these were 16 and three quarter so i think for our cleat i think we're gonna make them um, probably 15 inches, I think it'll be fine. We'll see how that looks, um, but I think that'll work out just fine. So let me get the cleat made and uh, then I'll explain how, to, how to, to make them in more detail. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our cleat. And now you can kind of see how those two will interlock there. So what I wound up doing for the cleats i just kind of made it up as i went along a little bit so i took a two by six a piece of scrap two by six happened to be pressure treated and i cut it 13 inches long and then i ripped it to three quarter of a, three quarters of an inch thick 
And so the important thing is looking at our profile here when we go put our screw in. So we're gonna go through our 5 8 inch shelf board into this, uh, this section of wood here, okay? We're gonna be using inch and a quarter deck screws for that. So, but anyhow, you can see how that French cleat system, those two will just kind of interlock in place there, okay? So, uh, so I just took a, a two by six, ripped it three quarters of an inch wide, and then I just went ahead and uh, set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and then just ran this through my table saw and gave it a bevel. All right, so now as far as what are we gonna do to apply our cleat to our board? So let me just kind of lay something out. So this is our main shelf, and then this is our, uh, our, our other shelf that's gonna connect. Now these, you see this one? It's just maybe just a whisker long. So I'll, I'll just kind of do something like that, or I might just go in and just make sure that those are 100% are uh, line up. So the cleat is gonna go on something like this, okay? So we're gonna center that cleat front to back, and then that will hold, we'll use some glue, and that will hold uh, those two together. Now, I may decide to come in after obviously this piece will have to be a little bit longer and add another piece uh in to connect these two together i don't know that that's really that necessary but i may decide to do that we'll see how much stability i think this cleat gives it i think this will be enough because i am going to staple it and i am going to come back and screw it now how to apply that cleat well, what I'm going to suggest is that we just lay our cleat down like such. And then we just take our, our board here. We're going to add a little bit of glue, obviously. And then just pop a couple of staples in, just like so. So it'll be pretty straightforward. Actually, it'll go like this. So you can see, just pop a couple of staples in. And then do the other side. So it's going to be, that part of it's going to be pretty straightforward. So let me go ahead and get one done, totally get the cleats on there and then you'll kind of see how it all works so now we can see how that is attached I put some screws and some staples and some wood glue but you can see now there's no way for this to to fold in there's no way for it to fall apart to fold out and it becomes a, a pretty sturdy little shelf there we could put them kind of back to back. You could you could build several and do like a whole surround. Uh, you know, you could do all kinds of things. You don't have to have every shelf in place either. Um, so you could skip a shelf if you needed to. So basically, we're just going to go ahead and finish doing the same thing. So you can see how those cleats are on there. Like I said, they'll lock right in. That's the beauty of that French cleat system. So we'll just go ahead and finish building the rest of our shelves. And we'll take a look at the final product here. And there is our finished shelving unit. With all of our shelves in place. And as I was saying, because of the way our shelves are locked in, this cannot be, cannot spread apart because of that cleat holding it in and it cannot pull together. If I hold the one side and I'm pulling, obviously it's not gonna collapse. And if I'm pushing out, it can't go out because these two are connected and locked into place. All right, my lovely assistant, I'm gonna show you how to take this apart and put it back together. So go ahead, let's remove those shelves for them. Really simple, they just kind of click into place there. And then the two halves just kind of come together and fold it up and we're ready to go. Now she's just gonna kind of set it back up and show you how the shelves lock back into place. 
that first one is one is a little bit tricky but then the rest should just go right into place just like so we're working on uneven ground here so it's a little bit tricky And there you go, you're open for business.